everyone and welcome to the show. I'm Trevor Stockwell, the guest host for this special edition of the fabulous Fempreneurship podcast. Thanks for joining us. It's another episode in the series where we're talking with the co-authors of the book, Eight Qualities for Great Leadership. Today, I'm talking with none other than Elaine Slatter herself. Welcome, Elaine. Well, thank you, Trevor, for having me on the show. <laughs> How does it feel sitting the other side of the um, desk, so to speak? <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit funny. Um, I'm usually the one asking the question. So this is going to be very interesting to have you as the guest host today asking me questions. So this is going to be fun. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We've chatted on quite a few occasions and we've also collaborated quite a lot on the book. Um, so we know where we each stand from a sort of leadership perspective and the passion that we have for it. Uh, so it's really good to chat. Um, to you today on this episode. Um, we also get to sort of dig in a little bit more to what you've written in the book and cover slightly different aspects to it as well. Um, so for the chapter in the book, you've written improving communication and engagement. Um, and I think they're two key issues. Whether leadership sort of rises or falls um, really determined is determined by those two aspects. I'm sure a lot of the listeners can think, yeah, I can think of examples where it's worked well and probably more obviously examples where it hasn't. Uh, so anything that you can share to help us all sharpen um, our leadership journey with regards to uh, improving our communication and engaging with people, because they're separate issues, aren't they? They're not sort of just bagged together. Although you've sort of expounded on both in the chapter, they are two sort of key aspects that work together, but there's different elements involved with each of them. So Yes, it's going to be exciting. Before we jump into all of the detail on that, for those that maybe are not so familiar with the show, uh, they're not so familiar with what you've done so far, share a little bit about who Elaine is. Okay, well, let's start off by saying um, I'm just like you. I was born in the UK, although my accent's a little different now. Um, I grew up in the UK and went to college in the UK and then set out for an adventure to come to Canada. Uh, via France. I lived in France for a year, but when you're young, you're very ambitious to, you know, learn, grow, travel. So off I came to Canada and started a whole uh, different career in Canada and also got some more education when I uh, went to college and university here in Canada, um, went married um, had two kids and, and sort of juggled everything, um, you know, at, at that time and then started a, a long career a corporate career and it was all basically in marketing and of course market the core of marketing is communication and engagement and so I worked for a large uh, U.S. corporation and did uh, many many projects worldwide it was a worldwide company and I think that's where I you know you hone um the skills of communication and engagement because it's cross-cultural so you have to be very aware of that element um, in the corporate world so in the end at the end of my corporate life I ran the Canadian division for this corporation and uh, had all the you know sales marketing uh, IT accounting all those groups report to me and I think that helped me even more understand that uh, in commun communication and engagement and how important it is because you have a wide variety of teams that, and they all communicate and engage differently. So that was a big learning curve for me too. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So what would you say would be, I suppose, sort of, if you look back now on part of sort of your journey and discovery um, on how key those two aspects are, what would be, Maybe the biggest thing that if someone would have told you then that you can share with the audience that would really have helped the journey go slightly smoother, what would that be? <laughs> yeah, well, at the beginning, um, you know, marketing was a, sort of a newer concept, I guess. You know, everybody knew about sales, but not so many people understood the link between sales and marketing. And I guess the biggest uh, thing that I wish somebody had told me is that you have different audiences for your message. You know, the way you're communicating should be different. And if you look at it um, from the perspective of people in general, 
we have this acronym in in the US and Canada says, that says KISS, which is keep it simple, stupid, right? So, yeah. you know, that's one thing that I wish uh, people had given me a tip on it is to keep it simple. Like your message should be simple so that you haven't got so much fluff around the message that people tune, tune it out the actual part of the message because there's so much fluff around it and that they don't concentrate on the message. And I say the second tip that's really important, and I think a lot of uh, politicians and uh, business people should definitely pay attention to is that you need to know the audience of your message. Um, you know, we all talk differently to different people in our lives you don't talk to your family the same way as you talk to a business associate you don't talk to teenagers the same way as you talk to a senior citizen you don't talk to children the same way as you would to your dog for example you know what I mean so every audience you have to make sure that if you've got a specific message that it's tailored for that audience and the same way when you are, you know, trying to form a community, when you're trying to engage your um, audience engagement or engage your employees, you've got to make sure that you understand that at the very beginning before you spout your message. Because if you get it all wrong, if you don't get the message tone right, for the audience or the engagement of piece that you're trying to do right for the audience. Like try to engage your audience when, when you're trying to come up with a program, then you, everything's going to, to really not resonate very well. You know, people are either tune out the message or they're not going to engage. So to me, that was the number one tip that I wish people had sort of pointed out earlier, I think I would have made fewer mistakes if I understood them, the, the, the medium better. And it's the same way in social media, like the, the tone of the messaging and the, the way you're messaging is different for the different audiences. Like if it's a LinkedIn audience, if it's a TikTok audience, an Instagram audience or Facebook, they're for or Twitter, there are five different platforms and therefore you have to make sure that your brand is distributed in each of those channels in the right way for that channel's audience because they're all different all different yeah that's really good there's a lot of lots of stuff in there as you were chatting and i was listening to it, i was thinking ah oh, i want to ask you about this i want to ask you about this maybe <laughs> the first the first thing just to to sharpen in you mentioned about sort of keeping it simple keeping the message simple and, and our communication simple and that's if we get that right internally then it's more likely to flow to the external engagement and the way we communicate to customers potential customers and that sort of thing so what i was thinking was what would be for people listening thinking okay elaine's a smart lady i've got to listen to her i need to review how I communicate, how can I simplify my message? What would you say? Because there's pressure, isn't there, on leaders to to make sure they communicate enough, and yet sometimes too much detail stops it from being simple. People don't listen, people switch off, people maybe don't understand it as well. So how how have you sort of helped people get that balance right? Well, I think if you uh, picture yourself as part of the audience and how you'd like to receive the message yourself. So, okay, so say you're delivering bad news to a group of employees, like that's not an easy message. But if you are on the receiving end of that, how would you like somebody to explain it to you? Well, first of all, you want to, lessen the impact on 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 the audience right because bad news is never good you've got to come out with what the news is say you're downsizing so what if i was an employee what would upset me the most when i hear the news from the corporate leader that they're going to right size the company 
you know, say it was Meta, Facebook's going through this right now. You know, uh, a lot of companies are actually going through it at, at the time that we're speaking because a recession is kind of looming and the corporate results aren't maybe quite what the corporation is looking for. So one of the ways you do that is cut your expenses. And one of the biggest expenses is the cost of employees, right? Yeah. So you're going to take a really good hard look at your employees and and who's going to stay and who's going to go. But if I'm giving out that message, you have to do it in a uh, humanistic way. So not the way that Elon Musk did it on Twitter. That is absolutely the wrong way to do it. You have to have empathy because if I was an employee receiving that message, I want to know that my company is going to support me. Yeah. So that's the first thing you would come out with that, you know, uh, due to circumstances beyond your control, this is what's going to happen in the next, and then spell out the time period. Is it in the next month? Is it three months, six months, 12 months, whatever it's going to be. And then talk about what you're going to do for the employees that you do have to let go. So are you going to give them their severance? Because that's the most important thing to the employee sitting there. I'm going to lose my paycheck. Am I going to lose it right away? Am I, can I feed my family? Can I pay my mortgage? That's what's important to them. So you have to calm that employee down in your messaging saying yes we understand this is very disruptive we don't like to do this we haven't done this in five years or 10 years or whatever it is like make them feel that you are have corporate responsibility and that you're going to do it in a very fair and human way so that means that if the minimum employment standard says that you should give a week's um you know, severance for for every year, then double it or triple it. So the 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 employee thinks, wow, that's that's really fair. So you want to leave the departing employees with with the feeling that they're being treated really fairly. And then you've got the remaining employees that aren't going to be severed that now they're thinking, oh my God, I got to do double the work you know, uh, am I ever going to get home? You know, I mean, this sounds okay. I still have a job, but oh my God, I don't think I can handle all the work. So you have to calm the staying employees as to understanding that, you know, you're going to review all the processes as well so that uh, maybe things that are, are being done now don't need to be done in the future and that the workload for those that are remaining won't be significantly higher you know, and to be a very understanding employer. Because the thing is, people talk. You know, if you don't come out and address it at the beginning, people are going to make, fill that void with their own opinion, right? They're going to say, oh, you know, if I was a Twitter employee, I would be dishing on Twitter. Like on Twitter, I'd be dishing on the, how horrible it is, don't work for Twitter, you know, so ever again so you're put, putting a horrible feeling into future employees of that company too you know they're not going to apply to twitter for example but if if you do it in a humanistic way and and you are centered on the people on the employees for example in this particular case then if that company starts to hire again in a year or two whatever you in the back of your mind you think yeah you know that that might be an okay company to work for because they were so great during you know in 2023 when they had to do their layoffs they were so fair they were out up front with what they were going to do they addressed the employee questions etc cetera, etc cetera. so once you've given that initial uh, message out always have a follow-up plan so that you, you're open to hearing employees' concerns because they want to vent, right? This is all news to them and they're going to go home and they have to share it with their families if, you know, if there's a possibility of, of no employment for them. 
but you want to give them a forum so they can discuss it. So it might be a town hall meeting. It could be booking a one-on-one -on -one with the with your team lead, whatever it is, so that the messaging is consistent throughout the company so that only good things can come from uh, not such a great message. So that would be my take on that. Yeah, yeah. No, that is really good. I like that. It's, it's more than just delivering the first message, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. having that follow up so that you're yeah. taking on that journey. It's an emotional journey, isn't it? Particularly if it's yeah, bad. Absolutely. In lots of ways, if it's good news, it's like we can handle that ourselves. But yeah. the bad news, we, we need to. Yeah. And sad to say, good news, bad news. It's just part of a leader's job, isn't it? Really. Yeah. To keep... um, yeah. And I like what you said as well, because if we don't control the narrative like communication will happen anyway won't it whether mm -hmm. it's really exactly. good or whether it's sort of toxic it will happen anyway and i think yeah, yeah the more we can influence that from a leadership perspective of you care about people um yeah you value the input they've had so you're going to reward them with you know a higher than industry standard severance or whatever mm -hmm. um, but also walk through the emotional journey that they've got because who knows three five years from now they might want to come back and work for you if you look after them yeah. well if you exactly. burn them, there's just no positive outcome at all is there <laughs> no no they're going to move on and they'd never want to work for you again ever yeah. you know and, and sometimes exit fast, interviews so. are a great idea too exit interviews so that you they can do yep. that you know, an employee can do their venting on an exit interview, and that gives the company feedback on what they can do better in the future. And because we're all human beings working for a company, and we're not robots, right? So we have feelings and emotions, and um, we have aspirations. So as a leader, that's your responsibility to address those for every employee. Um, that comes to you with with that situation and if you have an HR department that's great um, hopefully you know you're all on the same page because that's extremely important but if you're just a small business and you're the person delivering the message and you're the person giving the severance and you're the person doing the follow-up then you have to be very aware as you mentioned in your uh, chapter on self-leadership and a leader has to be very aware of themselves and how they come across to their to their different audiences and and that takes some time to to uh, lean in and, and and hone those skills I mean they're all skills you can learn and a lot of it you do by practice right it's not stuff you learn in books it's stuff yeah. that you practice and I and I think I go back all the time to how would I like to be treated you know because you know in in your own life things that have gone well things that have gone not so well and and communication is right up there on the top if you don't communicate the right way then the result isn't going to be what you expect yeah absolutely and it's like you have to stay on top of it don't you because you can mm -hmm communicate really well in one scenario and then yeah. it's not so much you drop your guard but you you drop the in level of intentionality i suppose of making sure that you're um, refining the message so it's simple but it's clear yeah. and it shows like the empathy that you're saying as well it's mm -hmm. such a key thing i think there is a danger that leaders hide behind the corporate announcement yeah. particularly bad yeah. news and it's very disconnected and and that's not mm -hmm. how you sort of foster engagement is it not good engagement <laughs> no no the leader has to be the leader of the emotional side of it too they can't hide behind the corporate message um yeah. you know even even a video the leader can do a video uh so that people can see the person and the feeling because in a video you can see the emotion right and and the feeling and the empathy and all that kind of thing and if if you as a leader don't aren't sure that you're good at that that's something you can still practice you can get on a zoom and zoom yourself yeah. and and so you can see and then play it back as if you were the receiver of the messaging Ooh, yeah. that was a bit harsh 
or yeah. you know um there was no emotion in that message you know and i'm saying i'm saying that if you do video make sure that there's a um don't read the message you know you you have your points for the message but it has to be heartfelt yeah. so make sure when you're giving the message out that it is a heartfelt message that people can say yeah he really means that or she really means that it's not just the canned speech that they're giving yeah because people can tell can't they yeah no that's that's really good mm -hmm.